Good evening and welcome to Rock Hill Baptist Church for Wednesday evening, June 7th, 2023. This evening's message is brought to us by Senior Pastor Michael Franklin and is titled, Why? And is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 7, verses 51 through 60. Enjoy. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. There is a worksheet back there if you did not get one. Carl would be glad to bring one to you. All right, tonight I want to talk to you about the subject of why. One question, one word question, why. And uh, the outline is as follows. Number one, Stephen did nothing wrong. Stephen did nothing wrong. Number two, Stephen reacted in a godly way. Stephen reacted in a godly way. Number three, Stephen was at peace with God. Stephen was at peace with God. Father, thank you for the night, and God, I just thank you for your word. God, I thank you for our scripture text. God, it truly is how Christians full of the Holy Spirit should react to situations of life. And God, I pray that we would understand tonight that everything that you do is for a reason, and there's a purpose in everything. And God, I pray that we would react the way you would react. And God, I pray that we would be a living testimony of your mercy and your love and your grace. So God, be it the scripture tonight, especially, I pray the Holy Spirit would just speak truth into our hearts and into our minds. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. One of the most asked questions I get in 43 years of ministry is why? Why did my mom get cancer and die a slow, painful death? Why did my father get let go from work, which put us in a financial strain in our family? Why did a set of twins die right after birth, one lasting six hours and another lasting 12 hours? Why are there church splits and other church having to close these doors? And uh, I, two of these four, the first two were things that happened uh, in my personal life. And from the beginning of time, man continues to ask why. Let's look at a godly, godly man named Stephen and try to answer this age-old question that many people have no answer for. I've been in hospitals where people were either thanking God or blaming God, and believe me, it can either make you bitter or it can make you better. The choice is yours. So let's look at Acts chapter 7 starting in verse 51. And again, you know, the, the scripture before is simply Stephen, Stephen preaching the word of God and telling the truth, all right? And he wasn't uh, candy coating it, uh, but folks, I'm just telling you, uh, there, there's a lost and dying world out there that needs the truth of the gospel, and uh, we are the ones that need to be sharing the gospel with people around them. So he said in verse 51, you stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. I know that sounds hard, but Stephen could sense where this was going. It wasn't going well. The reaction wasn't good on the part of these scribes and these Pharisees and these people that knew the law but didn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And really the whole jest of what he was saying, and he was trying to get their attention to make them understand you guys were the ones that crucified the Messiah. You are guilty. And and this is why he was reacting this way. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, And again, we're talking about uh, John the Baptist, all right? John the Baptist. And then he talks about Jesus. So we're talking about two folks that died for the cause of Christ. John the Baptist was a forerunner of Jesus. And of course, we know how Jesus died. Of whom now you, you have become betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it. 
So while it seems to be harsh in what he is saying, folks, it is true. It is truth. And he was sharing his heart. And he was sharing, uh, you know, uh, the Israelites' uh, life and, and what it was all about and why, you know, when the Messiah come, they would not even recognize Jesus as the Messiah. So you have to ask yourself, who is this Stephen? And let's look, in, look back another chapter, Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6, and I want to start in verse 3. And basically, in those days, you know, the, the apostles were doing their thing, and uh, the question come up about the widows, who's taking care of the widows? And by the way, I, I thank God for our widows ministry. Uh, Cal is helping us with that. Uh, you know, uh, Mary and them do a great job. Cody is helping with that, uh, the list and the visitation and all that's going on. It's a wonderful, wonderful ministry. But basically, they were needing some people to run that ministry so the disciples could, uh, you know, praying and the reading of the Word and the spiritual things in church. And folks, that's why it's so wonderful to have so many volunteers to help with ministry. But in verse 3 it says, Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may, uh, may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continue to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen. Now look at this, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Then they list six other names there, whom they set before the apostles. And when they prayed and laid hands on them, then the word of God spread and the number of disciples multiplied greatly and a great many of the priests were obedient to faith. And folks, it's that balance in ministry that's so important. Everyone in church is important. I've said this since day one, I, since I've been here. If everyone in our church, if every member would do one thing for the Lord, just do one thing. That's, that's why we have the spiritual gifts you know, to fill out. That's why we have new members class. That's why we encourage you to get hooked up with a committee and get up, you know, get hooked up uh, serving the Lord, and we would be hitting on all cylinders. And then it says, uh, it says in verse 8, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. So God was using Stephen uh, to, to uh, preach the gospel and miracles. Folks, he's talking about miracles here. He was so right with God. He wasn't perfect Okay, Job wasn't perfect. He eschewed evil. He was a righteous man. But he's simply saying, Stephen obeyed God in every sense of the word. And then it says, back down in verse 10, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Then they secretly induced men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him and seized him and brought him to the council. I mean, every word and every challenge that they did to Stephen, Stephen had an answer, and he had a biblical answer for all that was going on. So these scribes and Pharisees and these, these folks, I mean, they literally were mad at him and hated him and did not like him at all. In verse 13, and they also set up false witnesses who said, this man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. And he is talking, they are talking about the temple and the law, and that was not what Stephen was doing. These were trumped up charges. These were false witnesses. They were lying to the council about Stephen. And it says, for, if, for we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us. Now look at verse 15. And all who sat in the council looked steadfastly at him, saw his face as the face of an angel. Well, folks, I believe his face was glowing. Okay? He was so full of Jesus. He was so focused on what he was doing. He wasn't afraid. He was being bold in a hostile setting. And I am telling you, Stephen was a man of God full 
of the Holy Spirit, and he had done nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. 2 Timothy 3, verse 12. 2 Timothy 3, 12 says, Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Jesus Christ will suffer persecution. Folks, in these days and age, and, and I'm talking about this, these biblical times, I mean, Paul suffered persecution. Stephen su- suffered persecution. Peter, you know, and, and John, they were thrown in jail. And the closer we get, folks, to the end times, I believe the more it's going to cost us to be Christians. So Stephen had done nothing wrong. Number two, Stephen reacted in a godly way. Look at verse 54. And when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. What does that mean? I'm telling you, they were under conviction. They were under conviction. Notice their reaction. And they gnashed at him with their teeth. Now, folks, that's that's serious words there. That is uncontrolled anger. That is just going mad, going just going off on somebody. That is boiling would be another word that you see. They got so angry at what he was preaching that they literally came after him physically. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. What did verse 55 tell me? God's with us in every situation of life. I don't care how bad it gets. I don't care if the doctor says there is no hope. Listen, folks, there's always hope with Jesus Christ. He is still in the miracle business. I still believe God can change every situation in life that we're up against. And we as Christians need to keep the faith. We need to keep the faith. We need to understand that God is powerful. God may be allowing this situation in your life to show his power, and show his glory. So Stephen, really, if you think about this verse, instead of getting mad and yelling back at him or trying to run, folks, I'm telling you, he ran to God. He ran to God. And you know what he was doing? I believe with all my heart he was worshiping. You say, how could a guy worship? Well, folks, I'm just telling you, if you're full of Jesus and you have an angelic face, you are worshiping Jesus and God. So it just tells me uh, just, just who he was and what he was about. He was getting that grace, that grace that God gives in hard times. And folks, we all go through it. We all go through uh, things that we don't understand. We don't know why this situation happened. Got a phone call this afternoon and Kathy Fraley was on the line, and Jim Fraley's nephew uh, had a motorcycle wreck yesterday on the way home from work and died in an accident. And, you know, it's just he buried his brother, what, two weeks, three weeks ago? And sometimes when all these things happen at once, we ask the question, why? And, folks, I want you to know that God is in control of all situations in life, and he has a reason and a purpose these things happen, or he allows these things to happen in our lives. Then in verse 56 it said, and look, notice the exclamation mark. He's seeing things that other people are not seeing. Okay, He is voicing these things out loud, and I know these people were just thinking, man, this guy's crazy. He's gone nuts. And look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. What was he doing? It wasn't just a vision, okay? I mean, it was a vision, but I think it was God assuring him, man, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I've got a spot for you. I'm going to welcome you into heaven. I'm going to look at you and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Tony, is that not what we all want? 
and I'm just telling you, you know, I've, I've always been amazed that everyone, everyone wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die to get there. Have you noticed that? And I'm not making fun of death, folks. I'm saying the day you die will be the greatest day in your life. When you think, just turn the news on for 10 minutes. Folks, we're going to a perfect place. We were not made for this earth. We're just pilgrims passing through. And I'm telling you, Stephen reacted in a godly way. He didn't get mad. He didn't start saying, God, this is not fair. I'm telling you, he had a come to Jesus meeting and he was welcomed, I believe, by God himself. Matthew 5. Matthew 5. Go with me if you have Matthew 5, verse 10. And we know these are the Beatitudes. And the Beatitudes say, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Folks, when I think of my years in the 64 years that I've lived, and I think of eternity, I'm just thinking, you know what? I don't know how this is all going to end. Okay, I don't know even in my own life. I want to get better. I do think I'm going to get better. But I'm just telling you, I win either way. If I, if I get to stay here and I get to preach another 10 years, man, I win. If for some reason God says, you know what, I'm going to give you six months. And I know you don't like to think of that. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm simply saying I win either way. And the persecution that comes in our lives, folks, it's just life. Okay, life is unfair. It started in Genesis chapter 3. Sin has come into the world and we're living with. I think Steve told me today there's already been over 300 mass shootings. And I think a mass is, what what'd you say, five or more or three or more or something like that in the United States. Folks, we're only halfway through the year. In this world, I'm just telling you, we're not of this world. They're going to persecute us. They're going to come after the church. They're going to start trying to censor my sermons. They're going to take our tax exempt away. It's heading that way, so we need to be prepared for it, spiritually prepared for it. We need to react the way Jesus reacted, and I believe that was exactly what Stephen was doing. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my name sake rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you and folks that is exactly what stephen was doing when he said look man i'm seeing god he was rejoicing so we see stephen did nothing wrong stephen reacted in a godly way and number three and here's the key, folks. Stephen was at peace with God. Folks, if you are not at peace with God, you are going to worry. Okay, if you are not at peace with God, you are not going to react the right way. I'm telling you, the peace of God calms all situations. I've thought many times, you know, you know what if somebody broke into our house? Folks, I'm, I'm just telling you, I would just calmly try to talk them down, okay? And again, I thank God for our security and the guys that keep us uh, safe here. And again, I, I would do the same thing. I, I would just, if something happened, I would just calmly try to talk people down, okay? And, and we need to be at peace with God, and we need to... We need to follow him in everything that we do. Now look at verse 57. And then they cried out with a loud voice. They stopped their ears. They are yelling. Think about how they're, what they're doing. They're acting like preschoolers. I mean preschoolers. And it says, and ran at him in one accord. And that, that means literally they, many people took a hold of him. He had no power over a riot in a crowd, a ruckus crowd like that. And they cast him out of the city, and they stoned him. And if you ever 
understood what the stoning was, folks. They started with small stones distances away, and the closer they got, the bigger the stones. See, they wanted them to be, you know, you know, persecuted. They wanted him to, to feel that pain, to feel that pain. And it says, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And folks, we know who Saul was, but we know what God's plan for Saul was also. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Why? Because he had the peace of God in his life. He wasn't yelling it. He wasn't mad. He wasn't saying, why, God? Why me? Then he knelt down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. Who does that sound like? We know who that sounded like. We know that that was exactly what Jesus said when he was on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He didn't say he died. Notice that. What makes us fall asleep? When we're at peace with God. What makes us fall asleep? When we know all things as well with our souls. And again, I'm not saying Stephen was a perfect man. I'm not saying that. But you know what God gave him? And folks, he doesn't give everybody this because some people, I'm just telling you the reaction, he gives, he gave him dying grace. Dying grace. And I just, you know, uh, Sharia, I, I just think of your mom and what you shared with us. Then in her last few minutes, y'all were sing- what was the song y'all were singing? All in all, you are my all in all. And she fell asleep. Folks, that's the peace of God in our lives. Stephen became the first Christian martyr recorded in the Word of God. The first Christian martyr. And here it said, he saw Jesus. Okay, he saw Jesus. And folks, I am telling you, uh, there's a song that I think all of you know, uh, We Shall Behold Him. I believe with all my heart that's exactly what happened in those last days. So we ask the question, why? Turn with me to Romans 8. Two more scriptures. Romans 8, verse 28. And we know, and again, I underline in my Bible, not everybody underlines and highlights in their Bible, but I underline the word know. That all things, I underline the word all there. And when you underline something, it's for emphasis, okay? And we know that all things work together for good, for good to those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Stephen was called. Stephen was faithful. Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit. And he literally died for the cause of Christ. But why? You know why? I believe it made an impression on this, you know, young man named Saul. And I believe God used that. His death to just kind of give Saul a wake-up call for future ministry. All things work together for good. And the two basic reasons why bad things, and that's, that's what we have a hard time understanding. Why do bad things happen to good people? Number one, for our good. For our good. Folks, God is shaping us and making us and molding us into who we need to be. God is polishing us. God is helping us to have all the nine fruits of the Spirit. God has a purpose for everything that we do. It's for our good, even though we don't see it. It's kind of like when I was a kid, I hated shots. I hated shots. 
And, you know, a doctor would look at me and say, this is for good. And I said, well, give it to my mom then. <laughs> I give it to her. <laughs> you got to have a shot to get better in, in some cases. But not only for our good. And here's the true and in, in the second half of that answer. For His glory. See, Stephen didn't have time to take credit for this. Stephen wouldn't have taken credit for this. But these people twice saw the face of an angel. Folks, that's, that's how I want to die. I want to die just glowing for Jesus. Just going and growing and glowing for Jesus. So that is the reason. But I want to also look at verse 29. Verse 29, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn, firstborn among the brethren. What was the second reason? To make us more like him. We need to conform to the image of Jesus because Stephen was simply doing exactly what Jesus had done earlier. Oh, folks, I, I do. I just long to hear that, that phrase, well done, and, and, you know, I've messed up in life. I've made bad decisions. I've done dumb things. But when it all comes down, you know, when, when you're up there and you're standing before God, I just pray that we all hear that. And I, I believe Stephen heard that. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. 2 Corinthians 12. Last scripture. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 7. Unless, this is Paul writing, I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelation. And Paul's basically saying, you know, it's like I told about the shirt, you know, I'm God's favorite. You know, there were some people that might have thought Paul, uh, that Paul was God's favorite. But Paul was just saying, hey, I'm just telling you, it's not about me. You can see that all through Paul's life. It was about God. It was about your relationship with God. It was how you could testify for God. It was how you could show off your God. A thorn of the flesh was given me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. One of the greatest Christians, one of the greatest soul winners, one of the greatest church planners, one of the greatest missionaries, three times asked God to take it away. And when I read this on Monday, you know what? <laughs> You know what hit me? I need to shut my mouth. I think of all, all that Paul went through. All that he went through. But yet God said, you know what? This is for your good. This is for your good. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And here it is, folks. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness in weakness oh folks i mean it's 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 so it's so there in why bad things happen to good people so that you can receive god's grace and you share that grace with others second corinthians tells us chapter one the reason we go through these things in life is so that we can minister to, to others that have went through the same thing Matter of fact, now for, uh, well, I'll be 65 in two weeks. And since I was 30 years old, I could go into a hospital and somebody would say, man, I got cancer. And you know what I can tell them? I did too. I've had it. I've had two incisions and three skin, two skin grafts. But it was by the mercy of God. There are a lot of people that can't get cancer and don't live through it. So I'm just saying, when I am weak, he is strong. Therefore, I must gladly, I will rather boast, therefore gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. And folks, that's the testimony. How are you still happy about, how, how are you still smiling through all this? It's the power of God. Folks, it's God that gives us the strength. It's almost like sometimes we think we're so tough and so self-sufficient and We'll just bull our way through it, folks. And I'm just telling you, it's God. Any strength that I have, anything good that happens in my life, 
is from God. I can't muster that up. It's God. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, folks, sometimes I'm just being totally honest with you. Sometimes God just has to break us. He just has to put us in situations where there is no way out because we always try to figure a way out. And folks, I'm telling you, I can't think of that song, God will make a way, Steve, when there seems to be no way. We are perfect and not sinless. We are at peace with God when he takes over all situations of our life. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Father, I thank you for this example of Stephen. And God, I thank you, Lord, just how, and I believe with all my heart, it made a huge impact on Saul. God, he was there. He allowed it to happen. No, he probably didn't throw a stone, but he could have stopped it. So God, I pray that we would understand that there's a reason and a purpose for everything we go through. We don't like it. Man, we have all had things that seem to be unfair. But God, I pray that we will have that peace that passes all understanding in the storms of life. God, you have a reason. You have a purpose. God, you are our strength when we are weak. Lord, we're going to rise above it because of you we're going to have a testimony because of you so god i pray no matter what happens in our lives god i pray that we would give you the glory for every good thing every gift every blessing that we have comes from you and god we thank you so much for that in jesus name we pray amen